We're excited to hear from the Youth Advisory Council of the Baltimore City Recs and Parks. Isn't that right, Director? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, <laughs> really excited. So you, you ready before we get? We're waiting a few more minutes, right? Yeah, we wait a few more minutes. Okay. I'm, I'm, you, uh, you go on right after we say the Pledge of Allegiance. Gotcha. But yes, we're excited to introduce the uh, young men and women, and they bring a lot of energy and really excited about the work that they're going to do for us. So yes, sir. And then Mr. President, uh, I don't know if you know you're being joined by another alpha man there. So. Oh man. <laughs> A two, this is an 06 tag. There we First go. <laughs> we gotta do something about that. It's too many of you guys. You know it. Good evening. This ninth meeting of the 73rd term of Baltimore City Council is now called to order. Members of the council, due to the use, uh, due to us being in the virtual meeting, please note that I will recognize you by saying you have the floor. Once I recognize you, please state your name and then begin to speak. Uh, tonight's invocation will be given by Reverend Bonnie McCubbin. Uh, she is the pastor of Good Shepherd United Methodist Church in Hamden. Pastor Bonnie, I appreciate you making time for us this evening, and I turn the floor over to you. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, President Mosby. I appreciate that. This evening, um, as uh, you mentioned, I am joining you from Good Shepherd in uh, the 14th District uh, under the leadership of Council Member Odette Ramos. Um, and I appreciate the invitation to be with you this evening. At this time, I invite all who wish to participate in prayer to join me in these words addressed to God. God of many names, almighty creator, Allah, Lord, Abba, Mother, Father, God. We come before you this evening representing a variety of faiths, neighborhoods, districts, and interests but united as people dedicated to making our city a better place for all who live, work, worship, and play here. As we do the business that is before us tonight, as we look at the sometimes boring but always important issues of zoning, divestment, residency requirements, ensuring accuracy and transparency in all that we do to spend city resources and money wisely, as we seek to overcome crime and domestic violence and violence against women so that all people can feel safe and actually and actually be safe in our great city, we are humbled to serve as a voice for our community. As we listen not only with our ears but with our hearts, may we be a discerning voice and presence for our communities and neighborhoods. There are no easy answers. Help us to be moved to action and not paralyzed by fear. Lord, part the sea of discontent and make a way where there seems to be no way, especially with our zoning and parking. We left up to you by name our mayor, Brandon Scott, and our city council, Nick and Zeke, Danielle, Ryan, Mark, Yitzi, Sharon, James, Christopher, John, Felicia, Eric, Robert, Antonio, and Adette. Guide each one of them by principles and morals greater than any one of us so that the city council can make decisions for the good of all Baltimoreans. Where we are divided, grace us with a unity of spirit to strive for good so that your will may be done. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh Reverend Bonnie, did I, did I hear Baltimoreans or Baltimoreans? <laughs> Whatever you want to hear uh, is the way you can hear it. My, no, my, think... family, hails, my family uh, hails from East Baltimore. Uh, my oh, grandparents yeah. met in the back of uh, St. Paul's Methodist Church where their grandparents set them up on a date. So, oh, you know, I, my, my family has been here since 1646. So That's yeah. beautiful. Well, Reverend Bonnie, thank you so much uh, for providing us. Uh, that that wholesome uh, and right word. Um, you can hang out with us or you're free to go, but we truly appreciate uh, what you mean to the community and we thank you for taking the time out for us tonight. Thank you and thank you for the invitation. I think my kids are looking for dinner though. Oh yeah, <laughs> thank you Reverend Bonnie. Thank you, God bless. So now we're gonna turn to the Pledge of Allegiance. So uh, please, if you have a flag around you or however you're gonna be able to uh, kind of minister, it, uh, we're gonna start the Pledge of Allegiance.
Now we're going to turn to our showcase. Uh, for our showcase uh, this evening, we're joined uh, by Baltimore City Department of Recreation and Parks Youth Advisory Council. At this time, it is my pleasure to recognize the amazing director, Reginald Moore, who will introduce these young leaders to us. Thank you, uh, Council President Mosby and all uh, the elected officials, council members. I'm truly excited to be here tonight to uh, introduce uh, or allow them to introduce themselves and, and tell you a little bit about them and what they're going to bring to our city. I had an opportunity this weekend to uh, sit, spend some time with the young men and women talking about our future, how they can engage in Rec and Park and how they can help us move our, our, our vision, our mission, uh, as well as our values forward as an organization. So uh, without further ado, without me continuing to talk uh, about them, I will turn over to Jerusalem Tiki who will start allowing the young men and women to introduce themselves. And again, thank you for allowing us to come and, and let them introduce themselves to you tonight. Thank you, Director. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'll make my intro real quick. Um, I'm Jerusalem Tiki. I'm senior analyst at Rec and Parks. Um, I've been working closely along with Sharnice um, Barnett, who's on this call, and Ashley Stewart, as well as um, Jenny Morgan um, with our youth council. Um, our youth council is here today. So I am going to go ahead and start with Anija. So Anija, go ahead and unmute yourself and introduce yourself to the city council members. Um, let's see what's going on. Anija, are you, if Anija is unable to unmute herself, I'm going to start with Beatrice then. Hi, um, my name is Beatrice Maceres. I am 17 years old and a junior at McDonough School. Um, and I am a member of the new Baltimore City Rec and Parks Youth Council. I joined the Youth Council um, in hopes of connecting with my city more. Uh, Baltimore City has given so much to me um, growing up here that I thought that the Youth Council would be a fantastic opportunity to give back and to learn more about the spaces that I walk through every day. So one of the things that I hope to gain from being in the Youth Council, hope to accomplish is, um, you know, being more active in my community, offering my perspective in ways that help um our city and our city recreation centers and our youth um so thank you very much for having me here today thank you beatrice and i see you just got um connected back on can you unmute yourself please hello everyone uh, my name is anaja Seth. i'm 16 years old and i go to baltimore city college um, when I was taught about the youth council, I was automatically interested because it was an opportunity to expand my mind and use my knowledge to help my community. Thank you. I'm going to move to Kalia Wiley. Kalia, are you able to unmute yourself? Okay, if not, I'm going to move to Odin Adams. Hi, um, my name is Odin Adams. I'm 15 years old and a sophomore at Baltimore Polytechnic Institute. Um, I joined the Youth Council because um, I row at Baltimore Community Rowing and I am directly affected by the decisions made by Baltimore Rec and Parks. So I wanted to get involved and I hope that I can bring more kids my age out to parks and recreational facilities to for, um, to be more active and hopefully they can find something that interests them personally. Thank you. Thank you, Odin. Um, next, I'm gonna to move to Marigold Louis. 
Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marigold Louie. I am a 15-year-old sophomore at Baltimore City College High. Um, I was born and raised in Accra, Ghana, where I lived until I was 11 years old. Um, through my work with advocacy, I have realized that the youth voice matters a lot. Um, most of these matters affect us emotionally, mentally, physically. Um, and I joined the Youth Council in hopes that I would be able to give the youth a greater voice than we have now, better the community and give young people a seat at the table. Because I think that young people having a seat at the table matters more than the adults because we're the ones going through the problems. Thank you. Thank you, Marigold. Next, I want to move to Wally Henderson. And Wally, go ahead and unmute yourself. I'm not sure. Maybe there's some technical issues. Okay. Um, Janaya Brown. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Janiah Brown. I'm a junior at Baltimore City College, and I represent the special facilities across the city. I decided to join the Youth Council because I wanted to invest into a city that has also invested so much into me, and I wanted to do that by helping to implement long term and sustainable resources into our rec centers to help aid the development of Baltimore's youth. Thank you again for having me. Thank you, Janiah. I see Aiden Joyner. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Aiden Joyner, 15 years old, a ninth grader at Maryland International School, which is a private school out near Elk Ridge. It's relatively new. Uh, the reason I just wanted to join the Parks and the Youth Council was because when I saw it, I realized it was a ch an opportunity for me to be able to help those in my community as well as, as other parts of Baltimore. As one, I just like to help people and teach others new things. And two, that I realized that there are a lot of people in Baltimore that especially youth and young adults that need help getting through life. So it, if this council can help do that, I'd be glad to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, um, Aiden. Um, Kalia and um, Wally are both under attendees. I'm not sure if there's a way to unmute them um, so that they can um, speak as well. Um, okay, I see Wally is uh, um, is on right now. Wally? Okay, there may be some technical difficulties. While they're figuring it out, um, I am going to go ahead. Um, one of our youth, Jamar Diggs, um, had a family emergency, but he still wanted to um, tell you about himself. Um, so Jamar Diggs is currently a junior at Crystal Ray um, JC High School. He's 17 years old. The reason in which he wanted to be a member of the youth council is because he wanted to see a change in the city that he lives in. Um, it doesn't start with his generation because um, they know what's going on and they've already started making up their minds, but it really starts with one of seven year olds who are still in development of what it means to be a male or female to say yes or no. Um, if we could teach our young folks morals and principles, I believe we could break break the chain that we are currently in. All right, I'm going to try one more time. Wally, are you unable to um, mute yourself? Or are you able to um, hop on? Or Kalia? Uh... So sorry that. Um, oh, okay, cool. I, I was like just getting used to this whole thing. It's okay, Wally. Go ahead. So, uh, yeah, I'm Wally Henderson. I am 15. I come from Digital Harbor. And, you know, one of the things I want to, uh, I'm in uh, youth council right now is that I really want to help out the city as best as I can. And, um, I've been here for a while and I really, it's like a really beautiful place and everything. And it's like really a magical place. And, you know, I kind of really want to help out. Thank you, Wally. Kalia, I see you're on as a panelist right now. Can you unmute yourself? Hi, um, my name is Kalia Wiley. I'm a 15 year old freshman at Baltimore City College High School. And 
I joined the youth council because I kind of want to help other um, youth people like myself. And I kind of just want to, um, you know, help others in, um, I guess, a brighter future. It's like a lot of things have been going on in Baltimore City and just seeing all the wrecks and parts kind of like gave, helped me see the city differently and to see how beautiful it actually is and how it can be. And I want to give those other teens a chance to see the city and just, you know, be more open to what's around them and help them with their future. I want to help kids find a safe place to grow, learn, and to better themselves as individuals. Thank you, Kalia. And thank you, City Council, for um, allowing our youth this opportunity to present themselves to you. Um, if you have any questions. No, I don't believe so. Um, to all the young folks, thank you for taking the time to join us and in introducing yourself to the city of Baltimore. Uh, you know, this is streamed on um, on on uh, online on Facebook as well as on uh, TV 25. So uh, those introductions were absolutely amazing. We want to give you the opportunity to uh, tell your constituents in the city of Baltimore who you are and where you come from. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I thank you so much, Director Moore, for your leadership uh, in bringing this council to us. Thank you for having us tonight. Thank you. Uh, the clerk will call the roll of all members. President Mosby. Councilmember Cohen, Craig, Dorsey, Conway, Schleifer, Middleton, Torrance, Bernay, Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, Ramos. Mr. President, we have a quorum. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. We will now proceed to the adoption of the journal. Mr. President, the journal of the April 5th, 2021 proceedings are on the council member's desk. Without objection, the journal will be adopted. Hearing none, the journal is adopted. Members, before we get into our main agenda, we have some housekeeping items to take care of this evening. First, I would like to thank um, all of the staff and direct your attention to the document on your desk or in your email listed the various appointments I've made for boards and commissions. There are many city boards and commissions that have representation from the city council. Uh, this work is vital extension of our work here on the council uh, and your working committee. Uh, I wanted to take a moment this evening, to congratulate all the council members who have been appointed uh, and invite you to join me in thanking them uh, for their service. Committee appointments. Members also, you have received uh, documentation listing appointments uh, to the Office of Council Service Oversight Committee. The membership and duties of this committee is established in the city code. Also on your desk, you will find or in your email, you will find a letter uh, with my nominations to the members to serve on the committee for legislative investigations. Uh, this is a standing committee for the council and the code directs the council president to nominate the committee members, chair, vice chair with approval from the body. At this time, if there are, are there any uh, motions to approve this nomination? Motion to approve the nominations. Second. Second. It's been approved and properly seconded. All those in favor of the nominations associated uh, with this committee, please say aye. Aye. Uh, all, aye. Those opposed, all those aye. opposed. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This motion is approved. Uh, next up, we'll go on to bills signed by the mayor. It could be found on page two of your agenda. We'll now move to bills being introduced for the first reading. Uh, Madam Clerk, please go into Bill 21-63. City Council Bill 21-0063, rezoning 1201 Dundalk Avenue for the purpose of changing the zoning for the property known as 1201 Dundalk Avenue, Block 6738, Block 36, 
as outlined in red on the accompanying flag from the R3 zoning district to the C2 zoning district. Sponsor, Councilmember Cullen. Uh, this resolution uh, is assigned to Economic and Community Development Committee. Next bill, Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 21-0064, Zoning Conditional Use Retail Goods Establishment with Alcoholic Beverages Sales, a portion of the 3901 Boston Street, also known as 3975 Boston Street, for the purpose of permitting, subject to certain conditions, the establishment, maintenance, and operation of a retail goods establishment with alcoholic beverages sales on the property known as 3901 Boston Street, also known as 3975 Boston Street, as outlined in red on the accompanying plaque and provided and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor, Councilmember Cole. This resolution has been assigned to Economic and Community Development Committee. Next bill, Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 21-0065, rezoning 1303 through, I'm sorry, 1103 through 1109 North Washington Street for the purpose of changing the zoning for the property known as 1103 through 1109 North Washington Street, Block 1521, Block 1, as outlined in red on the accompanying plat for the R8 zoning district to the IMU 1 zoning district. Sponsor, Councilmember Glover. This resolution has been assigned to the Economic and Community Development Committee. Now on the 21-66. City Council Bill 21-0066, Retirement Systems, Recruited Investment and Divestment Fossil Fuel Companies for the purpose of prohibiting the new investment of certain retirement funds and fossil fuel companies, requiring the divestment of certain retirement funds and fossil fuel companies within a certain time frame, requiring certain reviews, specifying a certain procedure for the divestiture of investments, authorizing certain exemptions, defining certain terms, and providing for a special effective date. Sponsors are Councilmember Conway, Costello, Stokes, Middleton, Torrance, Ramos, McRae, Burnett, Porter, and Blair. Uh, please let the record reflect that uh, I have signed on as a co-sponsor to this as well. Hey, Mr. President, um... Mr. President, I just want to make a note, um, although I appreciate the tenant intent of the bill, um, I did not request to be a sponsor of this bill. Got you. Somehow they mixed up Mosby and McCray. So, uh, if let the record reflect that, uh, uh chairman McCray chairwoman McCray is not on uh, this, but uh, I am on this bill. Is there any additional co sponsors at this time? At this time, I will allow the uh, sponsor of the bill chairman Conway uh, to speak to. The floor is yours, Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so, as we know, climate change poses a massive and significant risk to the planet, to our city, and to our residents. Um, as temperatures rise, our storms get worse, uh, sea level rises, impacting our inner harbor, um, and electricity, of course, gets more expensive as, as, as folks need um, to cool their homes. Um, Baltimore is already spending millions to, mit to mitigate these effects of climate change. Um, and, and we're also doing this while we're dealing with crime, we're dealing with COVID-19 and, and, and other issues. Um, but the, the looming threat of uh, climate change still has not gone away. Um, this bill uh, requires that the city pension funds divest from fossil fuels within five years. So by 2026, um, we would have to completely remove ourselves from fossil fuels. Um, it it, it re reserves the... Um, under under emergency circumstances, it'll reserve the right for the board to suspend the the ordinance um, with a request to the mayor and to um, to uh, board of estimates. Um, Baltimore has been pioneering. Uh, uh, um, Baltimore's led on climate change um, for for years. Um, we have uh, strong local advocates, um, and we've also in 2018 issued a lawsuit um, against. Uh, fossil fuel companies uh, and the impact that they've had on our city. Um, so this would be further in line with with those actions that we've already taken. Um, this would not be the first divestment pill that we've seen in the city. Uh, the very first one was in, um, in in the 1980s when we divested from South Africa's apartheid government. And then again in the 2000s when we, we divested from the Sudanese government um, because of the genocide in Darfur. So, you know, we're, we're also not the first to do this. Um, this uh, a similar piece of legislation has been passed in New York, in New Orleans, 
uh, in Annapolis and even in D DC. Um, so we wouldn't be first, uh, but we certainly would be joining a worthwhile cause. Um, and I encourage um, all my colleagues uh, to sign on and I appreciate those that have supported this far. Um, I think this, it's about time we put our money where our mouth is. So thank you, Mr. President. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, next up, we have, uh, I'm sorry, Madam Clerk, this bill is assigned to, um, sorry about that. Uh, this resolution, this bill will be signed to Public Safety and Government Operations Committee uh, to the next bill 21-67, Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 21-0067, Baltimore City Residency Requirements, Prohibition Against Purposeful Evasion. For the purpose of prohibiting a reorganization or shift in staff reporting requirements in order to purposefully evade the Baltimore City Residency Requirements and establishing that a violation of that prohibition is an ethics violation enforceable under the City Ethics Code. Sponsors, Councilmember McRae, Porter, Middleton, Ramos, and Fuller. I see the hand of uh, Councilman Torrance, as well as Councilman Cohen. Mr. President, I just want to be added as a co-sponsor. Gotcha. Yep. As well as uh, uh, Chairman Stokes, uh, Chairman Chairwoman McCray, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. During the last term, the City Council passed legislation requiring senior level managers who report directly to agency heads to be Baltimore City residents and registered voters in Baltimore City. This bill is simply the compliance and enforcement piece of the previous legislation. And some may ask, well, why do we need further compliance and enforcement? After the city residency requirement law was passed, the Labor Committee held a series of hearings to ensure that agencies were in compliance with the law. And what the committee found was that some agencies had rearranged their organizational charts, which led to questions by committee members if it was done in an effort to evade the intent of the law. What impact does this have on our city? 57% of the employees who hold managerial positions in city government do not live in Baltimore City. And that results in approximately 792,000 in annual lost income tax revenue from 33 million in annual payroll costs to these employees. Imagine if those individuals were city residents and how that could drastically change our local economy. As we continue the conversation around succession planning, and local hiring, adding this enforcement component to the residency requirement law will ensure that city government is leading by example and the employees and the employees who hold these important positions have a vested interest in our communities and our true stakeholders. Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues for your support. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this bill this has been assigned to public safety and government operations as well. On to 21-68. City Council Bill 21-0068, curing mistakes and bids. For the purpose of permitting the city purchasing agent to waive minor irregularities in bids, permitting a bidder to cure mistakes in a bid under certain conditions, permitting a bidder to withdraw a bid under certain conditions, defining certain terms, requiring the city purchasing agent to prepare a determination showing the relief that was granted or denied regarding a bid's correction or withdrawal and clarifying the duties of the city purchasing agent notwithstanding this subtitle. Sponsors, Council President Mosby, Council Member Middleton, Ramos, and Bullock. I believe from lunch there were some additional co-sponsors um, that we might have missed. If they are, you can raise your hand. I see Chairman Stokes, Chairwoman McCray. Uh, Councilman Torrance, Councilwoman uh, Felicia Porter, Councilman Cohen, Councilman Glover. Uh, hearing and seeing none. Um, this is a bill that we talked about at lunchtime. Uh, it's just part of best practice, uh, particularly when you deal with uh, some of the issues that we've seen from a procurement perspective here in the city of Baltimore. You know, as discussed, we've definitely moved in the wrong direction over the past 30 years as it relates to uplifting local minority owned and women owned businesses. I think there's a statistic out there uh, 30 years ago, there was uh, a dozen plus uh, African American owned businesses that ranked within the top 100 in the United States here uh, that was headquartered here in the city of Baltimore. Today, we only have 1, 
uh, uh, this is a process that allows for smaller local businesses who maybe not necessarily have the institutional knowledge or connectivity if they uh, were to do something a slight uh, minor error uh, in their application it provides for a curing process a process that has due diligence that's built into it but a process that's fair and equal um, uh, for all that are participating uh, so um, excited for the co-sponsors excited for this hearing as you know that this is one bill out of uh, a package of bills uh, that i'm excited, excited to partner with uh, council member burnett as well as council member glover on um, again, as we talk about growing our city, we have to grow our businesses inside of our city. And as we grow our businesses inside of our city, they'll be connected to the communities and hire the young folks that we're providing real opportunities to. So uh, this is uh, one variable and a very complicated equation around uh, rebuilding businesses in the city of Baltimore. Um, but again, thank you to the co-sponsors of this bill. Uh, this, this bill has been so assigned to public safety and government operations as well. Uh, Clerk, if you could read 21-69. City Council Bill 21-0069, Transparency and Procurement, for the purpose of adding certain disclosure requirements related to fulfillment of detailed specifications for contracts, prior contracting experience, and the demographic characteristics of, of employees, other sources of labor, and board members of contractors and subcontractors for city contracts over $100,000 defining certain terms, establishing certain administrative penalties, and generally relating to better transparency in Baltimore City procurement. Sponsors are Councilmember Glover, City Council President Mosby, Councilmember Stokes, Cohen, Bullock, Burnett, Ramos, McRae, Torrance, and Middleton. I believe I see the hand of uh, Chairman Yitzi, Chairman Slifer. No additional hands. Um, uh, Councilman Glover, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you to my colleagues. Uh, those of you who have co-sponsored um, this bill early on during our <clears throat> luncheon. Uh, this is very, very important to me. Uh, one of my goals when I got elected was to uh, restore the public trust in our government. Uh, and what, what better way to do that was to uh, do it through the city council. Um, this bill is essential to provide the transparency in the, in the city, excuse me, the procurement process. It will make transparent the city's consideration for bids on contracts and how we translate to inclusively and uh, diversely add those participated uh, small businesses <coughs> and contractors um, onto this bill. This bill stands to help monitor whether our contracts are employee city citizens um, and it also allowed us to uh, take control on how we act when it comes to who those monies go to. We want to make sure that those uh, contracts don't go to uh, those family members who subcontract those contracts to individuals. And we want to make sure that, you know, six months prior uh, uh, to them getting those contracts, we want to see the data, you know, that happened way before they got this other contract to make sure that they had hired city um, residents. Again, this is really, really near and dear to me because I'm big on uh, providing opportunities for residents that live here in the city of Baltimore and uh, whatever way to, to pay taxes uh, right here where you stay. Uh, a lot of times when I go in the uh, con, excuse me, when I go ahead in the community, I see these contractors that, that are hiring, uh, you know, some brown people, but I, I know for a fact that uh, a young man or woman don't mind holding a sign up that says, uh, slow and go for 20 to $25 an hour. And uh, that's not what I'm seeing. So again, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, for allowing me to speak on this bill. And uh, I look forward to my colleagues' support as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Council Member Glover. This resolution is assigned, I'm sorry, this bill is assigned to public safety and government operations. On to 21-70. City Council Bill 21-70 required market research for the purpose of requiring contracting agencies to conduct market research investigations before determining that no qualified certified business enterprises are available to enter into leases or concession contracts, requiring the Minority and Women's Business Opportunity Office to attempt to identify qualified certified business enterprises is contracting agencies state that no qualified certified business enterprises are available to enter into leases or concession contracts, 
requiring the Minority and Women's Business Opportunity Office to notify the contracting agency and the Board of Estimates if the office identifies qualified certified business enterprises that are available to enter into leases or concession contracts, requiring contracting agencies that want to waive or reduce MBE, WBE contract goals to conduct market research and document the market research to, dem to demonstrate why it is necessary to waive or reduce MBE, WBE contract goals, requiring the Minority and Women's Business Opportunity Office if granting the waiver or reduction of contract goals to give the waiver or reduction of contract goals and the accompanying market research documentation to the Board of Estimates, requiring contracting agencies that want to waive utilization requirements for a specific contract to conduct market research and document the market research to demonstrate that needed goods and services are only available from a sole source, requiring the Minority and Women's Business Opportunity Office in granting the waiver of utilization requirements for a specific contract because the needed goods and services are only available from a sole source to give the waiver and the accompanying market research documentation to the Board of Estimates, defining a certain term and making the Board of Estimates the ultimate arbiter regarding the reduction or waiver of MBE, WG contract goals and utilization requirements. Sponsors are Councilmember Burnett, Council President Mosby, Council Members Middleton, Bullet, Torrent, Porter, Stokes, and Roberts. Are there additional co sponsors? I see Councilman Glover, Councilman Cohen. At this time, I'll yield the floor to the gentleman from the 8th District. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. Uh, so, this is what does uh, essentially is tries to move us away uh, from sole source contracts, which perpetuate a lot of inequities in large dollar projects. Uh, it gives an equal shot to businesses and it forces the city to look into gaps that may exist in the market. Uh, if there aren't businesses, uh, that are pr producing a certain type of product, then that gives us a, a path forward to uh, try and grow MBEs, WBEs, and, and pushing them into those areas where gaps exist. It also uh, it pushes agencies to engage uh, in, uh, minority and women-owned businesses uh, when uh, going through a procurement process uh, to make sure that they have an equal shot and an equal shake to get city contracts. And so. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, a good discussion on this. Uh, thank you to the co-sponsors and um, thank you for the partnership, uh, uh, President Mosby. Well, thank you. Now we're gonna move on to resolutions. Uh, clerk, please re read the resolutions, starting with 21-39R. I'm sorry, before we move on folks, uh, just from housekeeping perspective, uh, that previous bill 21-70 uh, is assigned as well to Public Safety and Government Operations Committee. Uh, Madam Clerk, please read 21-39R. Resolution 21-0039R, Violence Against Women and Overlooked Public Health Crisis. For the purpose of inviting the Police Commissioner of the Baltimore Police Department, the Health Commissioner of the Baltimore City Health Department, Baltimore City State's Attorney, the Director of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, the Executive Director of the Mayor's Office of Children and Family Success, the Sheriff of the Baltimore City Sheriff's Office and in certain community-based organizations to appear before the Baltimore City Council to discuss the rise in violence against women and what strategies are being put in place to reverse this epidemic. Sponsors are Councilmember McCray, Porter, Middleton, Ramos. Any additional co-sponsors? I see Glover, I see Torrance. I see, uh, Chairman Stokes, Chairman Conway. Madam Chair, the floor is yours. I'm sorry, and I also see uh, Council Member Zeke Cohen. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, the, the floor is yours. Thank you again, Mr. President. Um, since 2007, there have been 394 women and girls killed in Baltimore City. Um, that averages out to 26 lives lost each year. Last year, we saw the highest number of female deaths in the history of our city as 49 women and girls were killed. Those numbers are just a snapshot as more women were victims of aggravated and common assaults, sexual violence, and other serious crimes. This is a public health crisis. And as we call on city agencies to discuss what strategies are being put in place to address this issue, we are also going to discuss the outcomes of this violence. The outcomes are multifaceted and impact the mental, emotional, and physical health of our women um, and our families across our city. 
I look forward to a meaningful dialogue on this topic. Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. No, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, now we're going to move on to 21-40R. Resolution. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Madam Clerk, again, uh, that uh, bill 21 dash that resolution 21-39R has been assigned to Health, Environment, and Technology Committee, now under 21-40R. Resolution 21-40R, Madam Clerk, Madam Clerk, Resolution 21-0040R, Informational Hearing, Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design. For the purpose of inviting the Director of the Department of Planning, the Commissioner of the Department of Housing and Community Development, the Executive Director of the Housing Authority of Baltimore City, the Commissioner of the Baltimore City Health Department, the Commissioner of the Baltimore Police Department, the Acting Director of the Department of Public Works, the Director of the Department of Transportation, the Chief of the Baltimore City to Fire Department, the State's Attorney for Baltimore City, the Sheriff for Baltimore City, the Chief of the Baltimore City School Police, the Director of the Department of General Services, the Director of the Department of Recreation and Parks, and the Director of the Mayor's Office of Performance and Innovation, to appear before the Baltimore City Council to discuss ways that the city can prevent crime through the concept utilized in the crime, in the crime prevention through environmental design model. Sponsors are Councilmember Conway, Porter, Middleton, and Are there additional? I see Chairwoman um, McCray with her hand raised. At this time, I see uh, Councilmember uh, uh, Torrance. At this time, the floor is yours, uh, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so redlining was banned 50 years ago, but the negative effects of these discriminatory, discriminatory public policies still impact many of our communities today. Nearly 70% of formerly redlined neighborhoods in Baltimore remain predominantly minority as well as lower income. This cycle of poverty and disinvestment plays out in many, um, many of the conversations that we have around abandoned houses to illegal, illegal dumping to lead paint and the list goes on. The harsh reality is that crime is a direct manifestation of break breakdowns in each of these other systems. Um, statistics show that over the, the last five years, three of our city's police districts have had more than 285 homicides each. Uh, there should be no surprise that these districts service the communities where redlining occurred. Um, so as we continue to focus on the people who are perpetuating this cycle of violence, we must also leverage the tools that we have in zoning, housing and other related codes to reduce crime through the design and maintenance of our structures in our neighborhoods. Um, to that end, I, I encourage uh, my colleagues to support and I look forward to the full, um, to the thoughtful dialogue on, on this topic. Thank you, Mr. President. No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, that resolution has been assigned to public safety and government operations. Madam Clerk, on to 21-41R. Resolution 21-0041R, Informational hearing, domestic violence in Baltimore City, for the purpose of inviting representatives from the Baltimore City State's Attorney's Office, the Baltimore Police Department, the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, the Health Department, the Sheriff's Office, as well as community advocates fighting against domestic violence to share their expertise with the Baltimore City Council and the general public and to discuss programs available to victims of domestic violence. Sponsors are Councilmember Conway, Porter, Middleton, Ramos, and Bullock. I also see the hair, hand of Chairwoman McCray, uh, Councilman Torrance, uh, Councilman Burnett, uh, Chairman, Chairman Conway, the floor is yours. Thank you again, Mr. President. Um, this hearing is gonna be slightly different than my colleague, uh, Chairman McCray's hearing on domestic violence. Uh, I come at this uh, with a perspective, looking at the systems that we have in place, uh, the programs that we have in place, uh, what we expect of our city agencies to support uh, folks that are dealing with domestic violence. I had the opportunity to serve as the analyst for DV stat while, uh, while serving at city stat. And I'm hoping um, to dig into those processes and make sure that uh, we're meeting the new need and the new challenge that we that, that we face with addressing the domestic violence uh, problem that we have in our city in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so with that, I, I look forward to the thoughtful conversation once again, and the support of my colleagues on this issue. Thank you, Chairman Conway. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, that has been assigned to Public Safety and Government Operations. Now on to Resolution 21-42R. Resolution 21-0042R, approval for the exchange of a Class B7 license for use at 3501 Boston Street, 
also known as 3831 Boston Street, to a Class A7 license for use at 3901 Boston Street, also known as 3975 Boston Street. For the purpose of providing the required approval under Maryland Annotated Code Al Alcoholic Beverages Article Section 129021D1, to allow a license holder holding a valid Class 87 beer, wine, and liquor license issued for use at 3501 Boston Street, also known as 3831 Boston Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21224, to apply to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City to exchange their Class 87 beer, wine, and liquor license for a Class A7 beer, wine, and liquor license for use at 3901 Boston Street, also known as 3975 Boston Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 212. Sponsors are Councilmember Coe. This resolution has been assigned to Economic and Community Development Committee. On to 21-43R. Resolution 21-0043R, Downtown Management Authority Composition, Members Selected by the Baltimore City Council. For the purpose of selecting and approving Councilmember Eric T. Costello to represent the Baltimore City Council on the Downtown Management Authority's Board of Directors, pursuant to City Code Article 14, Section 1 through 7, E3. Sponsors are Council President Mosby and Council Member Middleton. At this point, I would like to recognize uh, Madam uh, Vice Chair, uh, Madam <laughs> Vice President uh, Middleton. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to suspend the rules for immediate adoption for this bill. Without objections of the rules being suspended, hearing and seeing none, the rules are suspended. Uh, at this point, I would like to uh, recognize uh, Chairman Stokes. No, we're going to keep it with uh, Madam Vice President. Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. I'd like to suspend the rules for Bill Number Twenty One Dash Zero Zero Four Three R for immediate adoption. The clerk will call the roll for immediate adoption. President Mosby. Aye. Councilmember Cole. Yes. Councilmember McCrelly. Yes. Councilmember Dorsey. Councilmember Conway. Councilmember Slifer. Councilmember yes. Middleton. Yes. Councilmember Torrance. Councilmember Burnett. Yes. Councilmember yes. Bullock. Yes. Councilmember Porter. Aye. Councilmember Costello. Uh, Councilmember Stokes. Yes. Councilmember Glover. Council yes. Member Ross. Yes. The motion is approved. The resolution has been adopted. Now on to the consent calendar. In section A at the back of your agenda, you will find it. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? So, so moved. moved. So moved. I heard a motion. Can somebody uh, formally second? Second. Second, Costello. It's been, it's been moved and properly second. All those in favor of approving the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries uh, and the calendar is approved. We we'll now move on to bills on second reader. Uh, I would like to first recognize Chairman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. I move we read short titles for second reader for the meeting. Without any objection, uh, we will read short titles for the duration of the meeting. Hearing and seeing none, we are on to short titles for the duration of the meeting. First up is economic and community development. Madam Clerk, if you could read formally into the record 21 26. City Council Bill 21 0026, rezoning 1201 South Canton Avenue. At this point, I would like to recognize uh, Madam Vice President Middleton. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, on uh, there were two bills heard in the uh, committee on economic and community development, and they were heard on April 19th, 2021. The first bill, of course, was 20 0026 rezoning 1201 South Caton Avenue. The sponsor was uh, Councilwoman Porter of the 10th district. The hearing, uh, the, the committee heard the bill on April 13th. Um, I move the finding of facts. 
Is there a second? Second. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor of adopting the finding of the facts, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Finding of the facts are adopted. Uh, back to you, uh, Vice President Middleton. And I move the bill. Fa I move the bill favorable as I move the bill favorable. <laughs> Is there a second? Second, second by Council. The bill has been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor of approving this bill, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The bill uh, is approved and printed for third reader. Uh, on to 21 27, Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 21 0027, RPP Area 9, Federal Hill, exception for 1 East Montgomery Street. At this point, I would like to yield the floor to Madam Vice President Middleton. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the sponsor of this bill was Councilman Costello of the 11th District. Uh, the committee heard this bill on April 13th as well. I move the bill is favorable. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Stokes. Moved and properly seconded. All those in favor of approving this bill, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This bill is approved. This bill is approved from second reader. It will be printed for third reader. We turn now to bills on third reading and final passage. The clerk will read the bill and call the roll. Uh, first up is 21 38, Madam Clerk. 21 0038, human trafficking notice requirements, modifications. President Mosby. Aye. Councilmember Cohen. Councilmember McCray, Dorsey, Conway, Schleifer, Middleton, Torrance, Nett, Bullock, Porter, Fellow, Stokes, Glover, and Ruff. This bill is approved on the 21-44, Madam Clerk. 21-0044, Retirement Board's Composition. President Mosby. Aye. Councilmember Cohen. McCray. Dorsey. Conway. Schleifer. Middleton. Torrance. Burnett. Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, and Ronalds. This bill is also approved. Now we'll move into committee announcements. Chairs, when you hear your committee, please proceed with your committee announcement. First up is uh, ECD, uh, Madam Vice President Middleton. No, announce no announcements at this time, Mr. President. Thank you. Next up is uh, education, workforce and youth. Uh, Chairman uh, Stokes, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. The education, workforce and youth committee will hold a work session on Thursday, May the 6th, 2021, beginning at 10 a.m. for Council Bill 20-0039, Local Hiring Employment Plan. On that same day, the education, workforce and youth committee will hold a hearing on Thursday, May the 13th, 2021, Beginning at can be 10 o'clock. Okay, yeah, that's a different day. Beginning at 10 a.m. 10 for Council Bill 21 0028, Landmark List Clifton School. Thank you, Mr. President. No, thank you. Now we're going to throw it over to Northeast Baltimore uh, and the Health, Environment, and Technology Committee. Uh, Chairwoman McCray, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. The Health, Environment, and Technology Committee will hold a hearing on Wednesday, May the 5th. 2021 at 10 a.m. on resolution 21-0027R, informational hearing, illegal dumping. The hearing will be conducted virtually through WebEx. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Madam Chair. Now we're going to jump on York Road and drive up to North uh, Baltimore. Uh, Chairman Conway of Public Safety and Government Operations. I like that picture. <laughs> 
Um, we, I don't have any uh, <laughs> announcements from the Public Safety and Government Operations Committee. Thank you. All right, Mr. Paul, then we're going to jump all the way over to Northwest Baltimore Rules Legislative Oversight, Chairman Schleifer. We have no announcements. Thank you. And then last but not least, we're going to bring it all the way down to Central Baltimore, um, Southeast Baltimore, Ways and Means. Chairman Costello, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. That's a long drive to South Baltimore from Northwest. Um, all of the following four announcements are um, going to be virtual WebEx here. Uh, Ways, and Means, uh, Ways and Means Committee will hold a hearing on uh, Tuesday, April 27th at 10 a.m. on Council Bill 21-0062. <clears throat> High performance newly constructed dwellings clarifications at the request of Councilman Costello. Uh, Ways and Means Committee will hold a hearing on Tuesday, April 27th at 10.01 a.m. Council Bill 21-0041, Board of Estimates, Basic Organization and Procurement Thresholds at the request of the Office of the Comptroller. Ways and Means Committee will hold a hearing on Tuesday, April 27th at 10.02 a.m. Council Bill 21-0041. Or real estate modernization at the request of the office of comptroller. And we see a one zero zero four three. Chairman Costello. Committee on Insurance. Chairman Costello. Yes. Can sir. you hear? Can you hear me? Could you reread yes, the uh, previous bill? You had a a, a a slight glitch. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, give sir. me one second, Mr. President. Ways and Means Committee will hold a hearing on Tuesday, April 27th at 10.02 a.m. on Bill Number 21-0042, Real Estate Records Modernization at the Request of the Comptroller. Was that the bill you're referring to, Mr. President? I believe so. Thank you, Mr. President. And finally, give me one second. Uh, Ways and Means Committee will hold a hearing on Tuesday, April 27th at 10.03 a.m. Council Bill 21-0043, Committee on Insurance and Risk Management Revisions at the request of the Office of the Comptroller. Thank you, Mr. President. No, thank you. Now we will move on to regular announcements. Um, uh, members, if you have any regular announcements, please be prepared uh, to uh, communicate them at this point. Uh, before we jump into members' announcements, I think all of us have a very important thank you uh, to our amazing Paige Ayana. Uh, she came and presented to us um, three, like three weeks, three meetings ago. Um, she's always here on time, no matter the weather, no matter the circumstance, always ripe and ready to go. She literally symbolizes all the potential hope and promise we have of our young folks coming behind her uh, and in her generation. So Ayana, from the bottom of all of our hearts, we're gonna give you a huge congratulations and thank you uh, to send you off. Uh, so on the count of three, if everybody could cheer and scream as loud as possible for our amazing Bright Scholar right here in the city of Baltimore, our Paige Ayana. So one, two, three. Yay! Yay! So if for folks out there who don't know, Ayana is out here. She's controlling WebEx. She's ensuring that all of these amazing council members um, uh, we can hear and see them and everything is moving smoothly. She's basically in the control room. So again, Ayana, thank you from the bottom of, heart, of our heart for all the work you do, uh, not only for us, but more importantly for the citizens of Baltimore. Uh, next up, are there any additional regular announcements from the body? Mr. President, I, think, I just- I was gonna say, I think that might be a first, but Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. I just want to add uh, the family of uh, Derek Chavin, Chavin to our prayer uh, moment of silence list as we know that the jury is deliberating as we're having our council meeting. And uh, we just, it, it's important that we keep that family in prayer um, as they move forward in the process that the jury is following. Okay. Any other announcements? Mr. President? Yes, uh, yes, the gentleman from the 7th District. 
Thank you, sir. I just want to lift the name of Teresa Hall, who was a longtime staff person with the city council and the mayor's office who passed recently. Yes. It would be remiss without mentioning her name on the record as she used to be behind the scenes in many of the events of both the council and the mayor's office. 100%. Thank you so much for that, uh, Chairman uh, uh, Councilman Torrance. Any other announcements? Yes, Mr. President, I'd like yes. to say something, sir. Yes, the floor is yours. The gentlewoman from the 10th district. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would like to formally recognize um, Mr. Quentin and Megan Lathan um, on celebrating five years um, in business um, for Beauty Plus. It's one of the, the staples um, in Baltimore City um, for black hair care. And so I just want to congratulate them on their five years and wish them many, many, many more years of business in Baltimore City. Thank you, Mr. President. Absolutely. A huge round of applause from the City Council on that. Are there any other announcements out there? I just want to, I want to thank my colleagues, Mr. President. Uh, to, to, to the gentleman in the uh, 13th district. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just want to give a shout out and thank uh, my colleagues, uh, Zeke Cohen and Odette Ramos for sending her staff down to help uh, create a joint effort and us, you know, crossing those uh, district lines to clean our great city of Baltimore. I look forward to myself and my team working with you guys and the rest of the council because we had fun and we had donuts and all that good stuff. But uh, again, I really, really thank you guys from the bottom of my heart being a freshman, you know, council person coming in and for you guys to come out and give me that support uh, means, means a lot to me and my staff. So I look forward to working with my other colleagues in the future and their districts as we uh, make Baltimore a cleaner, greener right a place to live. Thank you. Well, we love Council Manic partnership. So thank you, uh, Councilman Glover, Cohen, as well as Councilwoman Ramos for that partnership. Uh, I see Chairman Costello's hand raised. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to um, kind of second what Council Vice President Middleton said about the, the Derek Chauvin uh, criminal trial and, and making sure that we're uplifting George Floyd's family and, and, and our prayers uh, during this difficult time for the family. Thank you, Mr. President. No, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, anyone else at this point? So I think, um, I'm sorry, did I hear something else? No? Well, at this point, I'd like to recognize uh, uh, Vice President Middleton. Uh, we're going to uplift uh, Ms. Teresa Hall, an amazing public servant who spent years upon years uh, in streets, in corners, in houses, in churches, and any and everywhere to give back to the citizens of Baltimore. We'd like to thank her for all of her hard work and her support. Her work is not done in vain. Uh, we know that she's watching over us like she would be at all the other city events. Uh, we'd like to thank Ms. Hall. Um, I mean, we'd like to thank her family uh, for all the sacrifice that she's made to the city for such a long time. Uh, and as um, Vice President said, as well as uh, Chairman Costello, uh, we lift up the family of George Floyd, uh, who have been um, traumatized by watching uh, his horrific death hundreds and hundreds of times on social media, in the news, in the courtroom. Um, the one thing I'll say to the citizens of Baltimore, uh, Baltimore City has always been at the forefront of ensuring that we protest and ensuring that our voices are heard, uh, but that we've done it in a productive way. And the expectation is that we will continue to do so. I uh, ask the uh, council members to spread that message uh, throughout your constituents. Uh, but again, uh, Madam Vice President, if we could uplift Ms. Teresa Hall, as well as the family of George Floyd, uh, as we close out, I yield the floor to you, Madam Vice President. Thank you. And thank you, Councilman, for uh, definitely for that correction in name. It's definitely the family of George Floyd. And, you know, we have had so many um, shootings and just so many problems with guns throughout our nation. And, um, it, it's just a time that we need to continue to be praying for our city as well as uh, the country. So on that note, the next council meeting, the next council meeting of the city council will be held on Monday, May 3rd, 2021 at 5 p.m. And may we have a moment of silence for the family of George Floyd, Teresa Hall, 
the 92 now victims of homicide in 2021 and the now 899 Baltimoreans who have died from COVID-19 since the pandemic began, and also for the families that continue to struggle with our um, opioid ep epidemic. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. There being no business, no further business at the desk. This concludes the ninth meeting of the 73rd term of your Baltimore City Council. Baltimore, we love you.